Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Welcome to a supplemental video for the Welcome Home in Winter Block of the Month, designed right here at Shabby Fabrics, and it's a celebration of winter. We certainly have plenty of snow here in North Idaho. It looks kind of a lot like this. Uh, piles of snow, shovels, sleds, snowmen, really just embracing this beautiful season here. So we are filming this supporting video and releasing this a little bit early. We have more and more requests from people that want to jump into the fun and magic of quilting, but they want to have kind of that viewpoint, vantage point of, can I do this? Here's the great news. Absolutely. Grab something to drink, a snack. I want to take you through uh, the journey of how to use these tools together, and you're going to be amazed at how simple this is. Even if you're a beginner, you've never even maybe done applique before, you can absolutely do this. A little bit of basic sewing skills, really, just to even sew the blocks together with a sashing, that's the hard part. This part I'm showing you is the fun and the easy part. So uh, welcome. If you've already gotten your spot, great job. We have a few spots remaining, so if you just stumbled on this video and you're like, I don't know what this is, but I want to be a part of it, or maybe you have a friend that is not aware of that, let them know. Um, we love it when we, can, when we can make people happy and you get your spot. So if you, that's you and you haven't signed up yet, reserve your spot. Very limited amount remaining. We have a thread set as well and the backing. Those are things you're going to want. Other things you're going to want, I'm going to be showing you right now. So let's just talk about what you can expect each month throughout the journey of being part of our Block of the Month. I think we have some of the best block of the months in the world because we have you in mind from the very beginning. Our goal is to do all the heavy lifting so you have maximum fun and the workload is really on us. We also test all of our patterns. We prefuse and laser cut all of these applique shapes. I know what that was like when I started applique. I, had, I went to Joann's and bought an entire bolt <laughs> <laughs> of heat and bomb light because I was tracing and cutting for days ahead of the applique and the shapes were never as perfect as I wanted even though I tried very carefully to cut them out. No one really enjoys that part, not lots of it anyway. They want to get to the fun of putting them down and stitching down with some beautiful thread. Pick up that thread set again if you haven't already gotten that. So let's look at the diagram. Maybe this is the first time you've been a part of our Block of the Month. Welcome, we're so excited that you're here and I think you're gonna love this so much. You're gonna be wanting to know what's coming up next. By the way, if you have not gone to the website and clicked on join the newsletter, I think it's on that top nav, do that. That's how you are going to be the first to know. We have had Block of the Month sell out within a day. Um, usually they're within a couple days. Um, I'm amazed we even have a few spots left with this one. So again, uh, sign up for the newsletter so you're always the first to know. Let's look at our diagram so you know what you can expect and why are these numbers here? Why are these dashed lines here? They all have a very important function. First off, the bold outline here is the size of your quilt block. The fabric inside your kit, which is your background, is this gorgeous teal. This is from Forest Chatter by Maywood Studio, an amazing team there at Maywood Studio, some very close friends of ours as well. Their team got together there at Maywood Studio and they were the ones that created this collection. I think that's so cool. And it was a forest collection and an unlikely coupling actually with this design that we had here. But when I started coloring with it, it just, it just became obvious it was the right choice and I think it's stunning. That teal is used, of course, as your background throughout this entire process. That background fabric is going to be your foundation for which all the applique shapes sit on that. That boundary line out there is going to be the size of your background once it's cut down to that exact size. So I wanted to show that to you. There's a significance about that. Go ahead and put the background aside for now because the first thing that we need to do is build our applique shapes. That's what this combination is all about that you're going to see and it's absolute magic. But first, as we look at our diagram, we need to read that so we can use it in combination with the light box and some Applifuse mat. 
Let's get our irons heating up to a medium heat while I'm talking to you about our diagram so that we're ready to move right into that step. So many times when I was an early quilter and I wanted to applique, I had a diagram, usually just shapes that were reverse refusable applique. Um, there was no lines, there was no numbers, there was no layout diagram, and I was literally trying to bring shapes onto the background one by one using a photo. As you can imagine, things were a little cattywampus and didn't always line up exactly the way I wanted. But once you iron it down, it's down. For that reason, we don't want you to have to guess. We're letting you know that this is piece number one that's going down first, followed by piece two and piece three and so on and so forth. And as you'll see, we will build certain sections separately from each other. I'll get to that in just a bit. Dash lines. Dash lines help you understand that here's piece number one. You can imagine that we need to put piece two over top of that. And we don't want piece one to come right up to that edge because what if it's peeking out a little bit? That's why we have that shape draw down just a little bit so that when you put your snow peak on there, you can see where shape one ends, that's the dash line, and piece two lies down. It really helps you to get a nice juxtaposition and orientation kind of perspective. So this is just to help you with lineup. As you can see, our shapes skew all the way into the seam allowance. So let's look at this dash line. It's very faint, but I think you can see that. This dash line is letting you know that this shape, let's just grab that shape, which is here, is going to be sewn into that seam allowance. So let's look at our actual quilt here. We'll zoom up on this corner. This piece right here is scooting underneath that. That's not butting up to the, the uh, inner border. That is scooting underneath that. And when we sew our, uh, in this case, our inner border to that, this edge will be captured in there. I love that. I don't have to worry about this butting up to that and stitching that down. This is scooting all the way into that seam allowance. That dash line helps you understand that, and that is the quadrant seam allowance. When you get your shapes, they are pre-fused and laser cut. We know that. There's a fusible webbing on the back. I've seen people struggle with this, so I like to just mention the easiest way to get off the paper, because this can be very difficult, is to just give it a crease. Give it a crease once, give it a crease twice if you need to. Don't be shy and off the piece comes. So this is now ready to go, and you continue to do that with all of your pieces. As I mentioned before, I don't try to lay out all of these pieces and then somehow iron them all together. I work in sections. Let me give you an example. I've done the Christmas tree, or the tree, I guess I would say, by itself. That was here. This section, one, two, and three, where's piece four? All the way over here. Okay, let's just work on that section. So let's do that right now. I have two um, what's called applifuse mats. I've used every applique pressing mat and sheet that is in, the, in really the market today. These are the ones, this is gold, and I use both sizes. It's not this or that, it's nice to work with a smaller mat when I'm working in a smaller section. And then when I want to do final assembly with the larger, everything coming together, this is too small. I'm going to grab this. So if you are in love with applique, just make the investment, get it over with. And you're going to say, Jen, <laughs> I'm so glad you talked me into that. That's, it's like a recipe. It, before I bought good cookware, I was burning everything, all the ingredients, it didn't matter because the cookware I was using was wrong. Once I started investing in good cookware, my meals were awesome. This is like that, right? Good ingredients make great results. So one thing that I wanna encourage you to, because as we can see, once we put the mat down, it can be difficult to see our diagram. We want pieces to be exactly where they should be. Grab your photo or grab your camera, take a, take a picture of that. You could even prop it up next to you. That way you don't have to do the little bit of peeking that I'm gonna be having to do right now, just to see 
through here. Now we're going to turn on our light box. This is the wafer three. This is the biggest of the light boxes that wafer makes. And the first thing we'll be doing is putting down piece number one. And we can see that dash line right there. And we see that here. We are just literally quilting by numbers. And if you were, if you were kind of my age or in that ballpark, you remember we all had paint by numbers. Everybody did that. This is the same idea. Super cool that the Aplifuse mat is sticky. This piece is not coming off here right now. I love that. Remember how I said I've tried all of the applique pressing sheets? Sheets are slippery. This mat is a grippy and I like that. There's less happening if I nudge this. It doesn't matter. It's not going anywhere. So this is another thing I love about the Aplifuse mat. Okay, piece number two is going down. And I've got a little bit of contact there. I'm just gonna give it a push. And then my piece number three, I can see, we can just take a peek there, see the bottom of that, the dash line. I can see my three. Lining this up. Right there. So I'm looking, I should be in line with this, in line with this, I'm in line with this. Love that. Let's just iron that down right now. Why go any further than that? So we have our, um, as quilters, we know we're always on a linen setting, the hottest setting for patchwork. Any fusible applique, of course, we're gonna draw that heat back to a medium. And I think that's pretty much true of any brand. This is heat and bond light on the back of this here. And it really prefers that medium heat for about five to six seconds. You always want to give this an opportunity because it's warm right now to cool down. Three things are now the glue between the fusible is now cooling, merging this to be in one unit. So you don't have to stop we can come over here on a separate section and simply turn and now do piece four and five and six. You don't have to wait. You can use any part of that that you want while that's cooling. And because that's really very similar, I've already done that. I just got that done ahead of time. So I think that's cool enough that I can peel that off. And now three shapes have become one. This is the magic with zero residue on this mat. Absolutely, I, I, have, I have tried to damage this <laughs> mat and I have used it, I would say hundreds of times and it looks just like the day I bought it. So this is not a consumable. You will never have to buy this again unless your dog gets a hold of it or something else happens. So let's just look at our diagram here. Let's, so we know we had piece one, two, three, four, five, six I did ahead of time. We know that we had our tree. And when you decide to do sections, you just say, okay, what is that section? What's the lowest number in that section? So as we look at this here, as I study that, I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna just focus on the tree, my piece 24 was the piece that went down and 25, and you're building the section. You get the idea. The one I wanna do with you because there's so many pieces is the house. I wanna do this with you um, and we'll probably speed it up a little bit, but I want you to see how I manage that. Again, I would absolutely have a photo here. I'd also line my pieces up. As we look at the house, that looks like the piece number eight is my lowest number and is where this whole thing starts. Nine, and it, sometimes it's fun to just, if you have kids that wanna help, have them help you. Where's number 10? Where's 11? It helps them learn their numbers. It helps them engage in your project and you get to do this as a family. Now, obviously, if they're old enough that can iron, awesome. But let's, I'm just gonna start building the site picture here. I don't have a camera to refer to, so I might be doing a little bit of peeking to make sure I have everything in the right place. Let's go ahead and build our house together. We'll let it cool. And then we're gonna build the whole site picture together after that's done, of course, you're gonna be stitching that down with your thread, but after that, we'll do a second part of our video. We'll be doing just a little bit of hand embroidery. All right, let's build our house together.
Wow. Is that cool or what? Okay. We need to let that cool. While that's happening, now what's next? We know we have this portion. We have this portion. I did this uh, sled. I had a sled that looks just like that, by the way, <laughs> in, in Michigan. We did a lot of that stuff in the wintertime. That was before cell phones, when children actually played outside back in the day, as they say. So what's next is now saying, all right, we understand that this is going to go down. This is going to all go down. I would recommend, well, let me give you two options. You can merge all of these pieces together with the exception of the smoke because that notice it's not layered. It's just kind of above that. And then bring that onto the background as one complete unit or we can bring the background on now and simply start to layer that down. You understand that if you were going to do this off of the background, this is where the larger amplifuse mat. I want to show you both ways. You can decide what you like. We can see the mountains are going to go down. There's that, they're back there. These mountains are going to go down. This pathway needs to go down. The house sets down. We have the ground over here, the ground over here, and everything lays on top of that. So make sure you understand that. And I would, I would kind of role play that before you actually do it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you want to just merge it all together here, that's what the big Applefuse mat does for you. Awesome, love that. Okay, so like I said, if we're going to go ahead and say, all right, let me, let me get a visual on this. Let me make sure I understand this. And this may be the approach you want, is to merge it all together and just bring it to the background as one piece. Always a good choice. So now we have this, but you can see our walkway scoots underneath that. So our walkway, notice that's been kind of sitting around waiting for me to use that piece. This is why I've been waiting, because I knew that the house was gonna sit down on, on that. So let's remove the house, it's cooled down now. All of those pieces, I, I know from my own experience, there is no way I would have visually understood that exact juxtaposition to get all of that correct. No way, not happening. I've already tried it. I tried it for decades. It never worked. I got in the ballpark. I was usually a little bit frustrated, disappointed, but now this is perfection and that's what I want. So if anything, like this was barely tucked underneath there, just tuck it back where it goes. No problem. Scoot that over. All right. We can see this mound of snow comes first. I guess that must be over here, actually. That works. This mound of snow. Don't you love how they sit right in those corners? Love that. Absolutely love that. Now I can see the tree. As I peer through here, oh, right there, I can see right there's the shovel. Right there. Is this a cool process? And if you ever can't see something, that's when I go back to the photo. I'm like, okay. Where's my sled? Oh, yes. So if you ever struggle with that, I can see just the bottom of the, the runners right here. Right there. And if you want to put the sled somewhere else, you want to switch that, go for it. This is just our idea of how to put the project together. And now we go and merge all of that, of course, together. You can take this approach or you can put the background down, and now you're putting the diagram, you're, you're doing this whole sequence and you're just ironing to the background. I like this. I have an easier time of seeing through it, especially with the dark background there. And obviously you're merging this all together. 
letting it cool, and you're simply bringing this onto the background, and it's going to sit perfectly. I'm just gonna iron it all together. It's gonna take me a little while, because I go slow, I let it cool, and I will have this on the background. And then we can talk about some hand embroidery. All right, all of those pieces are now one. An extraordinary process, as you can see. Look at this. Coming on to the background. Right, perfection. I could not, I've been doing this forever. I could not achieve that, bringing pieces on one by one. Everything stitches down, everything irons down, and now here comes the thread set. Obviously, you're coordinating the thread. Super nonstick, a size 80 is a great needle for this. It's specifically engineered for fusible products because we all know that as the action of the needle is going through with the thread, through fusible, there's a glue on the back of there. And as the action of the needle is, is moving, heat's generated and we don't want to kind of reactivate the glue on the back of fusible that could potentially gum up the needle. Schmetz is so smart that they have engineered a special needle, size 80, there's other sizes as well, but 80 works great for 50 weight thread. That is specifically to resist that possibility. So it's been a really good, it's, I've had great luck with that. Um, so if you are gonna pick up the thread set, or maybe you already did, and you didn't grab the super non-stick, I'd highly recommend that if you have had any problems with needle getting gummed up. And of course, you're gonna stitch down. Well, let's just take a look at our quilt here. We didn't do anything particularly fancy stitching our applique down. We generally just come about a 16th of an inch on the inside of our shapes and stitch them down with a coordinating thread. Now, later on, when we're doing our long arm quilting, you can see we had a lot of fun um, putting some action in the sky with swirls and stars and things to give our snow some kind of uh, loftiness, almost an embossed look. But that's not done in this stage. When we're just stitching down the shapes of the background, we just choose a coordinating thread and stitch close to that edge and let the magic come alive really in long arm quilting. So that's how you're going to be putting your blocks together each and every single month. Once those are done, of course, in your one of your, your final shipment really, is really when the sashing comes in. That's when the quarter and seam allowance is starting to come into play, right? That's why I said, this is the easy part. Sewing the sashing together, your inner border, your outer border with a nice quarter inch seam allowance is more complicated than what we did here together. So you're just gonna repeat that process. You'll add your sashing, your inner border, your outer border, and of course, off to the quilter you go, unless you're quilting that yourself. Now, one thing that we did and I talked about in our overview video is we've heard our customers say, I don't really like hand embroidery, I'm not good at it, I don't like taking the time to do it. So we did something called knockouts. We have a lot of those on this quilt. Let's look at the quilt. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Specifically on our snowman here, that smile in his eyes when you get your shapes, that's going to have, they're going to be cut out. It's nice to use the tweezers if they're not completely uh, out and removed and just pluck those out. So that way when you put your snowman's body together, you're going to have a perfect smile because we cut that on the laser. Same thing on the skating pond here. I was that little girl skating on that pond in Michigan while my dad was ice fishing. That happened, by the way. I also fell through the ice on one of those trips, by the way. Um, and somebody scooped me out of the ice. Praise the Lord, they did that. Um, and I used to skate while my dad was fishing. I could not resist um, putting the path in there. That's a knockout. You're seeing the background popping through on this. So we've done a lot to save you time. There is a little bit of embroidery. Lacing the skates, when we get to that point, when you get to that point in your block of the month, we have some great instructions inside our pattern showing you how to lace the skates. Again, we've taken that time to do some advanced skills on our laser cut. So when you're getting your shapes, those are already cut out for you. If you need to punch those out, just use the, uh, those to just kind of grab that little bit of fabric out of there 
and you'll be able to lace those skates up per the instructions. We all did that as kids, right? Lacing up our shoes. So there is just a touch of embroidery. I can see that on the eye for the dog. I think we have a little bit of that. Um, there's not too much of that. Let's talk about the windows. That's another thing. If you are comfortable with sewing those on with the machine, that's what we did. Simple, easy peasy. You could grab a ruler. I'd certainly grab something way smaller than this. Measure the width of your windows. If that's an inch and a half, you're gonna split the difference. Lay the ruler down. Draw the line, both vertically and horizontally. Do some practice stitching. Set your stitch to be a satin stitch, a nice tight satin stitch and practice that. That's what we did here. If you're like, I don't, I sew on a featherweight. I get that, you can't do this on your machine. I will cover some back stitching on that. So if you wanna sew in the mullions on the windows um, by hand, I'll show you that back stitch. And we'll also be covering some French knots. So we'll get in, I'll clean up just a little bit. We'll get in closer and we'll cover those hand embroidery stitches. Okay, so as I was getting ready to clean the table, I realized I'd not put the smoke on and it's on now. As I mentioned for the windows, one thing we like to do once they're on is measure the width of the window and just split it in half. This is about an inch, so I'm gonna take about half that and draw a nice straight line. If you wanna do a single mullion across, you can. If you wanna have triple pane, you can do what you wanna do. This is again, just our idea of how we want to create our quilt. Again, if we're going to go do two of those, that's two and a half, and maybe you're gonna split that in thirds. So maybe you wanna have the upper half. I would be parallel with this to have the right uh, orientation, lining that up. But we would want that distance from the top and that distance again from the bottom. Maybe we'll go a little bit different. Now, for us, we chose to go ahead and grab our black. You could use the dark brown that's in your thread set, whatever you wanna do. We did use our super nonstick, we got some scrap fabric, and we practiced that uh, satin stitch. If you're like, I, like I said, Jen, I've got a featherweight. Um, I don't do that, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, no problem. Some black embroidery floss, we have a couple strands, simply not the end. And we'll come up. By the way, I would stitch absolutely everything down before you approach this with hand embroidery. Remember, fusible is only temporary to get you to the sewing machine to stitch things down. It is not be for lots of handling, and of course, hand embroidery involves a lot of handling. So this is not in sequence with how I would do this. This would be absolutely stitched down, and now I'd be approaching this to do the hand embroidery if you are choosing this. So this may lift while I'm doing this and this is why we would have it stitched down. So that's my disclaimer. <laughs> that's what you're hearing from me. So up we go from the very bottom. Start just outside the window. And the goal now is to just split the line with our thread. Floss, I should say, down. And I've just got black embroidery floss. That's what you can just grab. Two strands, if this is the approach you're going to take. And you're moving back toward yourself. And of course, our goal is to, to get this as straight as possible. That's one of the other reasons we like to opt for a satin stitch. It's easier to nail the consistency and straightness with a satin stitch than it is a back stitch. You have the precision of a machine instead of the imperfection of hand embroidery. Now it also has charm though, right? Everything doesn't have to be perfect. 
That's how people know it was hand done. Just embrace your imperfections and say that's proof that this was <laughs> made by hand. All right, that's how you accomplish a backstitch. Let's put that in one more time, right there. To tie off, we've covered this in previous videos, but I'll cover that here. You're scooting underneath the stitching you just did twice, at least twice, and tying off. Now, and just snip. But let's just talk about, actually let's, let's do our French knots in a separate area. I'll, I'll actually do with this on the white uh, fabric I have here, cream fabric. French knots, easy peasy, another classic embroidery stitch. Fun to do. We want, for the French knots we did, we did two strands of embroidery floss and I think we did two wraps. So we just come up. Embroidery floss is to my left. Needles in my right hand. If you're left-handed, you're doing this in reverse. Needles in the front and I'm gonna wrap around the needle twice. Pivot the needle downward and you're going back through the hole you just came up through. Notice that is trapped under my thumb for a reason. We want to keep it out of the way as we're pulling the knot through and letting go at the very end. So that's our bird's eye or whatever you ever want to do. Maybe you're doing a project where it's flowers or flower petals and you want the center to be kind of that, the very center. This is a great stitch for so many things. Let's do that one more time. Let's say that's not big enough for you. You want a bigger uh, knot. You could bulk this up by adding more strands of embroidery floss or more wraps or both. Let's do four wraps this time. One, two, three, four. Pivot down. You can see already that the knot is twice as big because we had twice as many wraps and tie off the same. And of course, you're on the back side of the project. So while there's not a lot of embroidery floss to stitch into, you're just in shallow, right? You're just tying off shallow on the back side of this project because you have this behind here. There's plenty to, to, uh, to tie off on. And that's it. Those are the only stitches in this entire block of the month quilt. So you can see that the applique that looked absolutely overwhelming, when we start to unpack that is actually super fun and super easy. Again, it's buying the good cookware, right? To make the amazing meal, getting the light box, getting the Applifuse mat, the both sizes are great. If you, if you wanna ask for some stocking stuffers or maybe a Christmas gift or birthday gift, these are great things that are gonna serve you so well, not just for this block of the month, but for any applique you're ever going to do. And then hopefully that the uh, embroidery was pretty simple as well. So if you've been waiting, watching, hoping, and just admiring, but not jumping into the fun of a block of the month, that's over. Get your spot if you don't have it already. Subscribe to everything we have. There's so much coming out on every single social media platform. Obviously, YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell, get on the newsletter, join the fun. The best is yet to come, if you can believe that. There's even more on the horizon, bigger and better than we've ever even done before. Thanks for giving me a good part of your day to show you how applique and how embroidery works for the welcome home in winter block month. I'll see you soon.